2015, we are in a regular session of City Council. First, we will begin by establishing a quorum, and we are missing just one member this evening, so we do have a quorum. I will be voting and acting as President Pro Tem. President Nisley is not present. Communications, are there any communications from council members? Uh, I have one, Mr. Uh, President Pro Tem. Yes. Uh, it's from some my neighbors in my uh, in my ward uh, concerning some dead trees on their property. They've been contacting the city to have them cut down because they are on the city right away, but um, apparently not getting any results. The answer seems to be there's just not enough dead trees up there that's worthwhile for the city to contract someone to do it. But nonetheless, the trees are in bad shape. I believe the bark is falling off of one of them, and uh, neighbors are concerned that another good storm will blow them down. Is this on Applegate? Uh, Windsor. Windsor? Okay. We've got a question from somebody on Applegate for uh, some trees, too. Uh, Windsor and Banbury, I guess, would be the closest. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Councilmember Reisner and uh, Mayor Weil. Councilmember Patterson. Um, I, I too have a communication. Um, as most of you are aware, I hope most of you are aware, there is construction on Richland Avenue in the evenings now. I know. That Go figure. Um, but there are light stands out there on Richland Avenue, so please be careful and be safe when you're driving down Richland Avenue. There have been a couple incidents, so I just wanted to heighten everyone's awareness of there are barrels marking where the lanes are. There are people that are, are uh, controlling traffic through there. So again, uh, and there's also light poles down there, um, or light stands. So just just be, be extra cautious. Businesses are all open on Richland Avenue, but just be cautious as you're driving down Richland. Thank you, Council Member. And if I recall correctly, the speed limit has also been adjusted and is uh, now 15? A, it says construction zone 15. Thank you. I think the 25 signs are still up too, but yes. I, it's just, I don't know how fast you want to go in that, uh, you, know. <laughs> you know, I don't know what you call it, you know. Thank you, Mayor. Any other communications from council members? Member Cochran. Thank you. I'd just like to um, share with the public the information about the annual Athens Bike Rodeo, which will be held this Saturday, May 23rd from 9 a.m. to noon, and there will be a location change this year. Um, it will not be at the Athens Community Center, but at the Ohio Health Oblenis Hospital parking lot, and it will be held rain or shine. So bring your kids out. Um, there will be safety towns set up, and children will have the opportunity to learn safe bicycling skills there. Thank you, Councilmember Jennifer Cochran. Any other comments? Communications from Council? Reports and communications from elected officials, beginning with Mayor Weil. Um, just a few announcements. Um, I believe we discussed the uh, <coughs> Athens County Senior Safety Day, which will be occurring Thursday. It's going to be at the fairgrounds between 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. Um, originally started to, to work on uh, safety skills in terms of driving, but it's kind of uh, flowered into medical screenings and uh, emergency preparedness and uh, basically free for all in terms of how to be safe and uh, a senior at the same time. It was a free lunch according to this too. As I say, it will be at the fairgrounds Thursday the 21st, uh, that's this week. Uh, on the Wednesday, there's two events going on Wednesday. Uh, <clears throat> one is the Regional Transportation Planning Organization will have a, uh, basically having comprehensive regional transportation planning meetings. They want input from the citizenry uh, of various locations. This Wednesday, uh, between three and six, Athens Community Center is the Athens meeting. Essentially, there'll be, um, it's a rolling, um, you know, information session. So if you have some input, they have some, they have some information what the trends are, what the plans are to create a regional transportation uh, organization. Uh, I know Jennifer is involved in it. Um, so um, we've been sitting in on as the public, I believe you're the public committee, advisory committee. It's essentially to speak with one voice in terms of our transportation needs and for the future. So they've been putting a plan together of the conditions and where they want to go with it. So they're looking for public input at that point. Uh, there are other ones in other counties, Washington County, but the main one for us is this Wednesday, May 20th, 3 to 6 at the Community Center. Also at the Community Center will be the uh, 
Ohio Means Jobs, which is a state uh, job fair. It's going on Wednesday, May 20th as well, between 1 and 6 p.m. at the community center as well. So it'll be busy at the community center. And the last item, I would note that um, Memorial Day uh, next week, the uh, trash and recycling will be delayed by one day. So there, Memorial Day will be the day off, and uh, so it move everything back one day. And we'll probably put out a PSA on that during the week, so to remind everybody. And that's all I have. Thank you, Mayor. Reports and communications from uh, Law Director Lisa Eliasson. No, nothing. Thank you. Um, I'm guessing, too, regarding uh, the holiday, we will likely not be meeting on that Monday. Is that correct? So we will be meeting Tuesday for a committee meeting. Okay. Moving on to ordinances for third reading. Ordinance 48-15, an ordinance amending ordinance 121-14, authorizing staffing levels. And this is introduced by the Finance and Personnel Committee. Who will be speaking on this tonight? I will. Thank you. Thank you, Member Eisner. Um, this uh, ordinance has been through all the uh, necessary readings. We discussed it in committee. It's in the second, you know, first and second readings. I really don't have any more to add to it. Does the administration want to say anything before passage or proposed? This is one modification. It adds an overlap with the sewer maintenance, a labor supervisor. We're having a retirement one. The, uh, the concept there is we hire somebody temporary from June to December. So when they quit in December, there'll be at least a, a few months overlap uh, so we can get the continuity that's required to maintain uh, our, our abilities. Uh, realize I think there's another uh, staffing ordinance change, which will be the 05615, that will be on a second reading. That's a different animal, but uh, that has to do with the interns, I believe. <coughs> but this one just covers the overlap. Excuse me. Okay. Uh, I propose uh, the adoption of uh, Ordinance 4815. Second. We have a motion and a second. Are there uh, any comments prior to voting? Any input? Okay, we have a motion and a second. <coughs> All those in favor of adopting Ordinance 48-15, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. The ordinance has been adopted. Moving on to Ordinance 57-15, an ordinance authorizing the mayor to make application and enter into an agreement for the fiscal year 2015-16 Ohio Attorney General's Drug Use Prevention Grant and declaring an emergency. This is introduced by Councilmember Patterson. Thank you, Mr. President Pro Tem. Um, I'd like to make a motion to adopt Ordinance 5715. Second. Thank you. Um, as is, is in the title, this is uh, allowing the mayor to uh, enter into an agreement with the 2015-2016 Ohio, Ohio Attorney General's Drug Use Prevention Grant, um, which has occurred, correct me if I'm wrong, Mayor, uh, this is, we've done this several times in the past. And This is the DARE grant, pays for about half the DARE officer. Um, in part of the question that, uh, that was being discussed in the administration is that whether we need to do this every year or whether we need to do it at all. Uh, many ordinances require authorization, um, and in the application, it's actually part of the application that they want to see a copy of the resolution or the ordinance saying we are authorized to do so. There's not one in the packet to, for this present for this particular grant, um, but at the same time, you should be aware of it. And I, from my point of view, uh, it's your choice to whether to continue it or not. I would actually kind of lean towards do, continuing it, uh, mostly because, like anything of this type of program, the more public awareness, the better. Sure. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, and, and thank you, Mayor. Along those lines, I believe Officer Rick has been doing this for countless numbers of years. I, I, maybe up in the 15, 20 years, is that? At least 15, I think under 20, but I couldn't tell you for sure. Okay. <laughs> I missed the last day of graduation. I was over in uh, Marietta for the regional planning transportation thing. The last one was this Friday, past Friday. Uh, he's, he does a great job. <clears throat> he relates to the kids. Uh, he sees them on the transition from sixth grade, um, and, it, and he sees them later on, and he pretty much stay, keeps a relationship with many of the kids. Um, he lets them know that uh, he's always willing to talk to anybody. 
I, he's actually on a, uh, going to be retiring soon too, so there will be a transition on that. I think that's the other staffing ordinance that's coming forward, mm -hmm. if my memory is correct. Thank you, Mayor. We have a motion and a second. Any comments prior to voting? All those in favor of adopting Ordinance 57-15, please signify by saying aye. 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 Who's opposed? Same sign. The ordinance has been adopted. We are now moving on to ordinances for second reading. These ordinances have already been read once in, in the public eye here and, and now are up for second reading. Ordinance 50-15, an ordinance authorizing 2015 street pavings and repairs. This is project number 293 and introduced by Council Member Pappy. Any comments? Um, yes, thank you, Mayor. As far as I know, the list of streets right now should be formulated and on the city website. Uh, I'd have to check on that, but I believe we got a copy of that, hard copy, a while back. Um, some of the streets, the way I understand it, would be Old Peach Ridge, Brown, Elizabeth, North Congress, Maple, East State Street, says two, I guess Stimson to e Evans, Sunnyside Drive, and uh, it says crack seal to be deterrent. So I guess they don't have them all down. So we have a few alternates too. Thank you, Mayor. Any other comments? Community members? Okay, moving on to Ordinance 51-15, an ordinance authorizing sidewalk improvements, and this is number project number 294, introduced by Council Member Pappy. Any comments? Ordinance 52-15, an ordinance authorizing 2015 rapid waterline replacement, and this is project number 295, introduced by Council Member Patterson. Comments? Ordinance 53-15, an ordinance amending Athens City Code, Title IX, General Reg Chapter 9.13, Clean Indoor Air, introduced by Council Member Cochran. Any comments or input? This is just to modify and get it congruent to the uh, Ohio Revised Code, I believe. Thank you, Mayor. Ordinance 54-15, an ordinance authorizing payment of the registration fee required by the Ohio Supreme Court on behalf of the Office of the Law Director, and this is introduced by Councilmember Reisner. Any comments or input? Just in past practice for the last years for the city to pay the registration fee for the attorneys in the office and we're just basically memorializing that thank you Robert. ordinance 56-15 an ordinance amending ordinance 121-14 authorizing staffing levels introduced by the finance and personnel committee this is, and this is the one that you were referring to earlier uh, this one is where we'd be adding a, uh, to the part-time seasonal, actually a uh, auxiliary DARE officer. This is transition from Officer Cross into becoming an auxiliary officer. Um, also, internal services will get an intern. I believe there was another section. I don't see it in here. Uh, council as needed. Is that it? Interns as needed? Okay. So those are additions for that. Thank you, Mayor. Any comments? Moving on to ordinances for first reading. Ordinance 58-15, an ordinance authorizing the purchase of road salt for the Engineering and Public Works Department, introduced by Councilmember Patterson. Thank you, Mr. President Pro Tem. Um, this has been discussed in the past. Uh, it's basically where uh, we looked into, uh, actually, uh, City Engineer uh, Andy Stone looked into the uh, transportation cooperative program in the state of Ohio to try to get lower rates on road salt. Uh, and in looking at uh, the amount of salt is projected with summer fill moving forward, it's about 1,200 tons at $72 a ton, which is a significant, uh, significantly less amount uh, cost-wise than has been um, uh, what, has, what we paid in the, last, in the past. So therefore, this ordinance will authorize an appropriation of $90,000 $90, from the street fund TC250, or 220, sorry, uh, TC200 for the purchase of the road salt. 
Thank, Thank you, you Councilmember Benders. And, and this is actually we're building up our filling up our salt bin at this point for the summer. This is actually a summer loading up for the winter. Um, I believe in staff, he, uh, Andy Stone mentioned that there will be another uh, authorization for the winter salt. And that, that's actually two different, um, not so much grades, but two different pricing. This is the pricing that's been statewide set by, uh, by almost county by county, it looked like. I, I got the literature I got was that it's a reduction from what we had from last year. We're saving quite a bit, but the idea is we get it now and restore it. And we have a good salt bin. If you remember, probably about eight years ago, we less than eight years ago, we we built one of these, a better one, so, which I, is covered. I yes. think the other thing is that he, he was able, if you recall, a few months back we did the pool, he was able to get into the pool, and so that's an important part with the road salt, and yeah. that's what keeps the price down, because they go in in bulk. Yeah, statewide right. pool. And, right. Yeah. Right. So we're, we're doing, we're shopping. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mayor. Ordinance 59-15, an ordinance establishing a fiscal policy for overpayments to employees, and this is introduced by Councilmember Reisner. Uh, thank you, Mr. President Pro Tem. Um, this was discussed in committee. It, there's been a couple of revisions uh, since we last met. I've been discussing this with the, the auditor, and um, so if you allow me, I'll read the, the latest version here. Um, Section 1, Athens City Council does hereby establish the following fiscal policy for overpayments to employees. All overpayments to employees may re be recouped by the City of Athens regardless of the amount of the overpayment. Uh, that's changed since uh, the last time it was discussed. So we were discussing anything less than $500 would not be uh, recouped. But in this case, we've decided if we're going to go after it, we should go after it. Followed by uh, employees required to repay an overpayment must do so through a reduction to their pay. The repayment may be processed to the city payroll system in order to provide for appropriate reconciliation of withholdings and pension payments. At the city of Athens' auditor discretion, the overpayment may be paid back in increments or as one payment depending on the circumstances as long as the taxes and pension payments are able to be reconciled. The repayment plan may be arranged by the employee and the payroll administrator. The overpayment must be paid back within the same fiscal year that it occurred so that the final W-2 reflects accurate compensation and withholdings. Section 2, this ordinance shall be in full force and effective at the earliest moment permitted by law upon its passage and approval by the mayor. So that's what is out there. The idea is that if we're going to and occasionally this does happen, not that often, but every once in a while there is an overpayment. Probably it's through some error on, on someone's part. Uh, it's, it's not a uh, deliberate thing, but um, it's it's good, I think, from an auditor point of view and from a citywide point of view that the various departments and, and sections have policies that can reflect about how they're going to proceed on a particular issue and not just do it at fiat or uh, with the idea, well, this is how we did it in the past. It's, I think we're probably in better legal grounds that we actually have a, a policy in the books and that department heads are aware of. So that's why I'm introducing this. Thank you, Councilmember. Councilmember Patton. I truly appreciate the change. I went and uh, discussed where I work with the payroll person and she kind of was a little shocked at first that we were even talking about stuff like that, but she thought she couldn't believe that we would just leave things open-ended like that, mm -hmm. you know, 250 or 500. So it sounds like you all came to a conclusion. Yes. It's, yeah. If it's out there, we'll, we'll get it back. Thank you. Conversely, if an employee is underpaid, we will do our very best to make sure that they get every cent that's owed to them. Absolutely. Further comments? Mayor, anything? Nothing to add. Okay. Thank you. Okay, we're now moving on to announcements and other business. I do have another business. Yes, Councilmember Reisner. Um, back on um, May the 6th, I believe we're all sent, or at least it's in our, whatever it is that we call that electronic file thing that papers get put into. 
No, we don't the have Google, a cloud. The, the Google, Google thing. Okay. Google Docs. The, the, yeah, that. Uh, but anyway, um, there are the uh, auditor's financial reports for April, and uh, I move that we accept those reports. Second. Do we have a motion and a second to accept the financial reports? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. The reports have been accepted. Thank you, Councilmember Reisner. Any other announcements and other business? We do have also a acknowledgement of a reappointment to the Historic Preservation Board. Who would like to speak on behalf of that? One, two, three, nod it. I will. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Um, the mayor would like to reappoint Joanne Beasley to serve on the Historic Preservation Board. Um, her return will expire on uh, June 9th, 2015, so we are now reappointing her for a new term. Mm -hmm. Thank you. May, um, I, may I ask the mayor's que a question? Yeah. Uh, what are her qualifications? <laughs> what are her <laughs> qualifications? <laughs> um, for the record. <laughs> well, actually, she spent many years on the Planning Commission. Uh, she also uh, worked in the Historical Society and the Museum, so she knows that pretty well. Um, she knows the history. Um, she's been around for that, a lot of that history. Um, she's vocal about what needs to be done, and uh, I think she's a good asset for that, a long view, so to speak. I, I think that you could call her a gem of historic knowledge yeah. in the city. A proportion. Yes. Yeah. So. Ask her sometimes. She'll tell you all <laughs> everything you want to know. And that's a three-year appointment. Is that correct? Yes. So, and we really appreciate when people um, come forward to do the the slogging of all our commissions and committees because that's really what makes the city run. So, thank you. Mm -hmm. So, I move that we reappoint her. Second. second. Awesome. Super. We have a we motion and a second to reappoint Joanne to the uh, Historic Preservation Board. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Good news, reappointment has been adopted. I'm sure she's waiting there on television to make sure she is. <laughs> oh, no. She's downstairs. They're meeting right now downstairs. Yeah, oh. Starting yeah. at 530. So they may still be there. When I was coming up, they were still there, oh, hashing things out. Uh, so she's probably not watching TV. <laughs> <laughs> and again, thank you for the service work. Um, Announcements regarding next week's committee meetings. I would like one, please. Environmental and development. Environmental Whatever. Development. The planning and planning development. And develop. Whatever it's called. Probably finance personnel. <laughs> finance personnel. Thank you. Member Rising. I think we should put transportation, though I'm not aware of any specific thing, but just in case. And city and service safety. We just don't want to be left out. Sure. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Wonderful. Any other announcements? Okay, at this moment in the course of our meeting, we have an opportunity for input from our citizens within um, the crowd. Um, typically, the protocol is that we, we offer um, three minutes at the podium. Please sign in as you um, approach. We won't start the clock until you're ready to go. So we'll grant full three minutes there. Um, and uh, these are issues that are not covered on our agenda. Is there anyone this evening wishing to speak um, to council? And thank you. If there's not a sign-up sheet, uh, let us. There is not one. Just state your name. Thank you. I'm Cindy Parker, and you guys know what I'm here about. <laughs> so I just wanted to. I was reading the paper and it exempted the member fest from the new ordinance, which kind of surprised me. And so it compelled me to write this letter. I'd like to address this comment not only to city council, but also to the county commissioners, the sheriff's department, the state highway patrol, and citizens of Athens County. I cannot shake the image of the emergency squad attempting to maneuver down State Route 56 and then Union Street through a sea of disorderly people, many drunk and on drugs. I watched as the emergency squad turned into the venue of Athens to retreat people at the fest. When I asked the chair of the reason for the numerous trips into the venue, I was told they were mostly heat-related or just plain passed out. I was curious to see if they would again attempt the quickest route to the hospital 
or if they would choose to go around for road and around a much longer route, but possibly quicker and less dangerous considering the absurd situation on 56. I can't help but worry what might happen to innocent local residents in need of emergency care during this time. What if someone in your family was having a stroke or a heart attack or an asthma attack or any number of problems requiring a quick response? I regret not having videotaped the scene as I cannot possibly understand how anyone viewing it firsthand could do so and not attempt to stop, stop such a hazardous threat. To close the state route, walk her out to the hospital, not once but several years in a row, seeing further custom and irresponsible. We are told that there just aren't enough law enforcement agents to write tickets or arrest people for open containers, riding precariously in the back of pickup trucks, trespassing on private property to drop off attendees, harassing people with such actions as pounding on cars, demanding rides, cussing at children, urinating and vomiting on business and resident property, behaving indecently in public and on and on. This is how our public officials protect the citizens of this community. I don't know what power this event or the organizer has um, since we concerned citizens are excluded from their meetings. But I, for one, am not impressed with the answers we are receiving. If the situation renders officials incapable of doing their job, maybe the situation should not be allowed. Profits over people should never be acceptable and certainly should not be condoned in this small community. Um, I challenge you to find a workable solution to this problem. It will be interesting to see who among us has the balls and the integrity to find a solution to this problem. I like that. So that's my personal opinion. And interestingly enough, I came across an old uh, newspaper in Athens News about um, the number six bus, which has some very interesting statements in it, which I'll wait and share. Thank you, Ms. Parker. Same problems. That was number six. This is number 13. And it's the same stuff, the transportation, the buses, the, the lack of safety in this whole situation. So I would hope that we can come to a solution soon. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Parker. Sure. Any other comments from community members wishing to speak to council this evening? Thank you. My name is Alice Rattle, and I say ditto to you, Cindy. I mean, it, and, and truly, if you did not experience it firsthand yourself, you wouldn't know what we have in our minds and what was going on. But, you know, I, too, was going down Union Street, and I had to drive down the middle lane from um, Restore clear to Schaefer Street. And I had people this close to my sides, both sides, and it was a sea of people. And by yourself, I mean, you, you just don't know what could really happen, and luckily nothing did. But, you know, that is a point. If she has a newspaper that shows about the Six Fest and they're having trouble, and this being the second year that they've closed Route 56, what is wrong with this problem? Why are you even having this discussion? Why didn't it just go away after the first year of it? So. I, I agree that I think all the entities need to get together and really put a total stop to the situation. So thank you. Thank you, Ms. Brown. For the comments? Thank you. And again, please uh, state your name and address. Todd Swearingen, and I'm not a resident of Athens, but uh, <coughs> the city proper anyway. Uh, and I had done some poor math, and I realized this was not a committee meeting night halfway into town. So this is kind of ad hoc. All I'm really curious about is what the status is of Brandstetter and Carroll's recommendations for the city pool, how far they've gotten, if they've gotten anywhere, um, and just to determine the status of, of the whole situation, that, uh, where the city is and their, their understandings. The match of ideas to dollars, timetables, construction timetables, etc. So, um, good good time as now as any uh, to to ask the question, and then maybe by committee meeting next week. I don't know if the answers will be there or not. But. Thank you. Yeah, um, typically during this part of the meeting, we uh, don't enter into uh, discussion or debate. So uh, your comments your comments are well received and. 
It, yeah, uh, no it, intent for debate. Just, just trying to find yeah. out what the status and the information is. Sure. But, uh, you know what exists like to make too. more or less for people to make their decisions or change their minds or whatever. Yeah. But, uh, Thank you. Any other comments for citizens? Okay, moving on to the acknowledgement that this evening we will be going into an executive session. Um, and typically we do that uh, uh, after we, we uh, give opportunity for the uh, members of the uh, press to check in with us or ask discussions or, or questions or comments. Um, I don't necessarily see any press here this evening, but we can give uh, citizens and others uh, five minutes. So right now it is uh, 7.33, three plus five is eight. So roughly around uh, 7.30, 7.40, we can go into uh, executive session. Um, we do need acknowledgement of who would like to be present or who we want. Motion. motion thank you. Great. Motion that we move into an executive you. session with the mayor, service uh, of the law director, all members of council present, and the president. Pro Second. Tem. Second. So a motion and a second, um, and then we'll signify individually uh, all those in favor, starting with Member Reisner. Aye. 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 Wonderful. Okay. I can announce the purpose of that. Yes. Okay, the purpose is to discuss pending legislate. I'm sorry, pending um, a pending lawsuit that we have, and uh, that is Sean Jones versus City of Athens, case number 13 CI 303. Thank you. So at approximately uh, 7 uh, 40, mm -hmm. we will uh, go into uh, that executive session. Thank you.